catch me a turtle. Okay, so this week's task is to please a little five-year-old girl and go catch a turtle. Or you can just go say hi to turtles. Hey, what's up? I'm Koa, and I hope you had a lively week of outdoors and animals like I did. Mine involved seeing a water snake catching a frog, witnessing the beautiful birth of a gargoyle gecko, watching the struggle for life of my Carolina wren fledglings, and I'll probably be making a video for each one of these topics. But here right now, this is Casual Outdoors Weekly where we go over outdoors activity for the benefit of your health and happiness and also knock up our nature smarts a bit all under six minutes. This week's outdoor activity is to meet a turtle. I've been wanting to get this snapping turtle for a very long time. LP has agreed to join me. She's gonna be my little camera woman. So, should we do this? Yeah. Okay. So little LP loves learning about the outdoors. And as mentors, whether you are a parent, aunt, uncle, grandparent, older sibling, whatever, it's our job to make sure our younglings have opportunities to see and learn about animals and nature. And I believe that nature shows are a great educational tool. Uh, David Attenborough, Steve Irwin, these, these guys really helped encourage me uh, to be more involved in nature and I learned so much but there is absolutely no replacement for actually getting outside and interacting with the outdoors. It's just so much more influential and positive than sitting a young face in front of an iPad and I believe LP has the makings to be a biologist or some kind of scientist one day and so if she asked me to go get a turtle I'm gonna get that girl a turtle. There are at least five different species of turtle living in and around this Virginian lake including a big snapping turtle that LP and I have been dying to meet up close and personal. And this snapping turtle is like my white whale. I had actually interacted with it once when I saw this kid fishing and snagged something, and he had snagged the snapping turtle, and so I had to go rescue the snapping turtle. So I don't count that as my meeting. We can't find the snapping turtle, but I'm gonna catch a turtle for, okay? Okay. That snapping turtle is still my white whale. Today we're gonna have to settle for a big cooter. Yeah, some turtles are called cooters, which is also another name for a female's. Well, you can just urban dictionary it. Now, you don't have to catch a turtle to do this week's activity, and I actually recommend that you don't unless you know how to handle turtles without hurting the animals or yourself. This task is just as easily accomplished by observing one from a distance. Your true benefit comes from just being outside and then admiring what millions and millions of years of evolution has laid before you. The first turtle showed up in the middle Jurassic period. That's roughly 170 million years ago, arriving before crocodilians and even snakes. The shell protecting the turtle has a lower part called a plastron and an upper part called a carapace, which through a complex process of morphogenesis basically forms from the ribs. If you encounter a turtle crossing the road and you want to help, put the turtle on the side of the road that it was heading towards. If you put it back where it started, it's just going to cross the road again and probably get squished. And turtle shells don't really stand up well to two-ton vehicles. So overall, I'll give this activity a medium oomph rating if you did it like I did it. And it's free though. That's always a plus. This week's Nature is Nifty is a study that one of my patrons, Dace88, sent me. And this study found that spending just 120 minutes or two hours in nature is associated with good health and an overall sense of well-being. And there are many studies similar to this one suggesting that interactions with the outdoors are essential to our physical and mental well-being. And this study found that these earned health benefits existed across all age groups and even for those with and without pre-existing health problems. And so they did do this study on 20,000 people living in England, and that's a first world developed country. That's a society that has a inherent disconnect from nature for most people. And so it's interesting, the results in that people in the developed countries that actually get outside with nature are experiencing these health benefits. And if you're watching this video, you're probably from a developed country. Here in the US, we are a developed country. 
Bottom line, make sure you get outside. And if you do get outside, it's your job to convince your family and your friends to get outside. It will alleviate their stress. It'll make them healthier and happier. It'll make them better family members and friends. And I'm spilling water. That's how excited I am about this point. Thanks to Ace88 for sending me that uh, study. All right, let's do dealer's choice. So Sarah Larson, you were correct. That was an Eastern chipmunk in last week's video. Next week, we're not going to do another animal identification. Let's do, I want two things. I want questions. Ask me anything personal about biology, whatever, random. Things I can answer quickly, okay, because this is Casual Outdoors Weekly under six minutes. Secondly, I want suggestions for outdoor activities. Seriously, people, give me something to do. How cool would it be if you told me to do something and I went and did it? Keep that in mind. Within reason, people. I'm not going to go, like, kiss a bear or something. Well, that's tempting. Okay. Spread some knowledge, be nature heroic. Thanks for watching.